Hi, welcome to Do Things and Make Stuff. Today, we're gonna to be turning some regular doors into sliding closet doors. So today, we're gonna to be building some closet doors. Now, this is my son's room. His name is Jedediah. He is the best. He just turned five months old, and he's got this amazing room that my wife has put together, but there's no closet door. So the project today, let's get some closet doors. And this is our bear. If you have a name for him, please help us out. We're looking for something. Here's what we're starting out with today. Now, we have these very similar doors everywhere in our home. My wife wanted to match. So we have these two pane doors. I went and purchased uh, four of them today at Home Depot. And we're gonna be hanging them in this closet. Now, I've never used this system before but at Home Depot they have these galvanized steel racks so that you can hang your own door so the plan is we're gonna cut these doors down to size we're gonna hang some galvanized tracking we're gonna paint them hopefully when we're all said and done she will be one happy camper all right let's get to it I've been trying to measure from the front right here and as well as the back all the way to the ceiling and I just found this nice little issue now you can't really tell but there is a half inch difference between here and between back here on this side so my wall this header has a bit of an angle to it which Again, it's a little hard to tell on this video, but it's a half inch off. Now the rest of the way seems to fit pretty well. So we're right at 80 inches tall. We get the rest of the measurements and we're gonna have to see kind of how this plays out. So I just made my measurements. Now my finish height of the closet is 80 inches. And the problem is, is these doors are exactly 80 inches. Now, if you look up here at the top, you can see how they mount. And then on top of that is a track. And then on the very bottom, you need some spacing um, so they're not dragging on the floor and gives you some, some area of play a little bit. And they also have these little mounts that go on the floor to make sure the doors don't swing in or out too far, which means these doors need to be one and three quarters inches shorter than the total height of our finished insulation. So I need to cut these down an inch and a quarter. Now on these types of doors, these are um, hollow on the inside which means that there's nothing here once I cut out too much. So along the top and along the bottom, there's typically about an inch and a half of solid wood to play with. So what I might have to do is cut an inch off the top and maybe three quarters off of the bottom. So we're gonna take a look, we're gonna start cutting these doors, but we're gonna cut them all the same way. Now here's a couple little tips. I like to keep my tape measure along the edge and you can kind of take a look and notice that it's pretty straight the distance all the way. If you're at a little bit of an angle, it's gonna change your measurement. So for here we're mar marking an inch and three quarters off is what we're trying to cut. So we need to mark this thing at 78 and a quarter. Now for me, when I like to mark it, I like to do this thing called a crow's foot. So uh, I put the pencil right where I'm trying to cut and I go kind of a V and then straight ahead so that you can see there we go now I know exactly where my line is so I'll do that over here on the other side as well again keeping it pretty square along the edge I'm gonna go over here to 78 and one quarter. Now again, sorry, the angle is a little off. I'm gonna go make a little V and a line. There we go. And I've got my crow's foot. I'm gonna make the straight line, keep things nice and simple. I have this drywall T square. Now, it's not a uh, 
super precision instrument, but for something like this, it is accurate enough, saving the hassle of doing a chalk line or, or anything more than that. Um, just really isn't necessary for something like this. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to draw a nice little straight edge. Boom. And now I've got my cut line. So the cut line is on an inch and three quarter. So what I need to do is make sure that I cut on this side of the line. So I want to take away the line. So my saw blade's actually an eighth of an inch, so it's probably going to remove about that much material. And that's what I'm looking for. Okay, now that we have our doors cut, we're gonna hang this track and uh, kind of test fit our doors. Um, the rollers hang right here in these grooves. Now, if you have a thin enough door, you have the ability to hang up to four doors on this single track but since I am using doors that are made from actual doors they're a little too thick for this so I'm gonna to have to hang two of these tracks now the hooks go in the back so the front is nice and clean looking which for another project I'm gonna cover up because I still don't like it it doesn't match this room but the way it works these hangers slide and roll right on those two so if you're doing a thin door maybe a door you're making yourself or something under an inch and a quarter, I believe, then you can put two doors and they will freely slide between one another. But for our purpose, we're gonna have two tracks. So let's hang a couple tracks. All right, well, test fit one is in, and this is the whole purpose of test fitting, right? We've got uh, a little bit of space up here at the top, which I think is okay. They have some adjustments that I'm playing with a little bit, but we are touching on the floor. So that inch and three quarter measurement that was in the booklet just like a little bit off now maybe it's not the booklet it could be my door frame it could be a many things which I just realized this may not be all the way tight because I was thinking I was gonna have to shim it So let's see, now that those are tight. Oh. Here's, now you can see what I'm talking about. See how one door is hanging a little higher than the other? It's because this track is at a tiny bit of an angle now. It actually makes these front ones work perfectly. And the good news, if you can tell they thought through this, one of these, they're labeled number one and number two, one of them hangs the door backwards a little bit, and one actually pushes the door forward a little bit. So, great news, I don't need two tracks, so that'll save me 30 or 40 bucks. But, now I need to solve this issue. I either need to trim a tiny bit more off of this left door, or I need to shim this down and trim all the doors. What I'm thinking is, I may just trim a little bit off of those back set of doors because I'm going to end up building something that's going to go here to cover this all up. So you'll never really know that one is taller than the other. If I just take a little bit more off, the problem will be solved. <clears throat> all right. So this is an electric planer. It's got a spinning wheel on the bottom. So for things like this, where I just need to take a little bit off, it'll be perfect. 
but I just found a staple, which is not perfect. I need to remove that real quick. Okay, so we're almost ready to paint, and I realized I need to fill in the bottom of those doors, and here's what I am going to do. Alright, so we're almost at the point where we are going to start painting the doors, uh, but I realize I have that gap at the bottom to fill in. Now, the gap at the bottom um, isn't structural necessarily, it's kind of like a kick panel, so the door doesn't have any flex. And since these are just closet doors, um, and I left my table saw at work, um, what I decided to do is I have some pieces of scrap, um, three quarter inch and eighth inch, that I'm just going to saw a couple and I'm just going to glue them in. Now, is that the, the proper way? No. These are closet doors going in my kid's room that nobody will ever see. So, for now, since I don't have my table saw and I don't want to bust the planer out just to mill out, you know, uh, an eighth of an inch off of four different pieces of wood. I'm just gonna glue in some strips and that'll be plenty strong and it happens to fit really well. All right, it's been a fun day of painting. It's actually not fun. It's literally one of my least favorite things about, I, literally, I can, anything. I hate painting. Anyways, the last thing to do, hang some hardware. This is the hardware that goes on the doors. And as you can see, they are different. One sets the door back one actually pushes it forward a little bit. The way you can tell the difference is that they are numbered. There's a number one and a number two. The number one goes on the back of the door, or sorry, it goes on the back door of the set since one is forward and one is backward. So let's set up number one first. So these are pretty simple. Uh, we've got number two, but again, I'm gonna start with number one, and it is very, very easy to do. I, I was playing with this one before, but essentially, you take both of the number one hangers, and they have these hooks right here on top. So if you take this hook, it hooks right there on the top of the door. So you can see, that'll keep it nice and even all the way across the top. Now for spacing, um, I just did the first hole about two inches out. Um, I don't know if there's any science to this at all, but... Um, I'm going to place that there and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, space the same, and I'm just going to screw those right into the door. And that is it. So I want to show you one more little thing that's kind of neat about these is they are adjustable. So if you look right here, there's this little cam feature. I'm sorry, I'm making a shadow. Now what it does is when it it's all the way over, it's all the way down, and when you roll it, it rises, and the wheels go up. So I've noticed from uh, previous things, if you put them all the way up, it's a little easier to install, and then you can adjust them for where they need to be. All right, so I'm gonna adjust these all the way up. You can see how this works. This wheel is riding in inside this track, and now this is adjustable. So if I turn it, which is a little hard to do with one hand, but if I turn, all right, so I've got that one turned all the way. If I come over to the other side of the door, and turn this one all the way as well. 
There we go. So not only is this gap up top now smaller, but we are freely swinging on the floor. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is fill in the holes where typically your door handle would be. So what I've done is I've taken one of these and just kind of pressed it in there by hand about as far as it can go. And there's two things that I would suggest. One, a nice rubber mallet will always be helpful, but secondly, and probably most important, if you don't want to dent it or cause any damage to it, a wooden block will always be your best friend. So I'm gonna put this piece of wood over it and that way I'm not hitting um, this finished piece of brass or nick, what is that? Brushed finish. Um, I don't wanna nick it up. So I'm gonna hit it with this piece of wood, covering it up a little bit. Well, hey, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, questions, please post them below in the comment section. And also, if you have any suggestions for any future videos, things that you would like to see me do, please uh, write them below. I would love to hear any of your thoughts. Thanks so much, and go make some stuff.